top 10 Dark Souls 3 weapons for PvE. Now, this is the last Souls game that we talk about until we get into Bloodborne and Elden Ring. And honestly, these lists are just getting worse and worse to make. Like, don't get me wrong, I like going back to the older games to refresh my memory or just doing some more research and testing to just learn some new things. But being able to only choose 10 is like so annoying. Like, I did it to myself, so I'm gonna have to do it anyway. But the criteria for this list is obviously going to be based on how useful they are for PvE. So obviously that means we're gonna have some variety to this list. I didn't wanna have like 10 straight swords on the top 10 list, which honestly you can because straight swords are just amazing in this game. But I did try to cover a wide variety of weapon categories, which typically speaking, the best weapon in that category is just going to outclass the other ones in that category anyway. So it still is going to be a valid list. Anyway, let's just get started. Starting off the list at number 10, we have the Great Corvian Scythe. Now this is a Reaper of which this class is pretty decent. You get some relatively quick movesets, some nice range. These weapons hit around shields. They all tend to get passive bleed as well. Now the one thing that I don't typically like about Scythes is that they don't really get as good stagger potential compared to things like Great Swords or Curved Great Swords. Their stagger damage is very similar to something like a Curved Sword or a Straight Sword of which those things are just going to be better because it is faster, consume less stamina, and tend to just have higher DPS in general. But obviously the Reapers still have their uses and their own specific skills that actually make them pretty good. Now with the Great Corvian Scythe in particular, this one is probably going to be the best in class because it does have the most range out of all the other Scythes and it also just gets the most damage because its scalings are just amazing. You get like S scalings all across the board with any type of infusion. This thing also doesn't have that high of a requirement and it also gets the highest bleed build up out of all the other Scythes. Most other sides only get 30 blood loss build up. This one gets 38. Now the trade-off being is that this also does do bleed build up to yourself, which is very reminiscent of the life hunt scythe from Dark Souls 1. The difference being is that this is like barely non-existent blood loss build up to yourself. I've used this up in a whole bunch and like not a single time have I ever procced bleed upon myself. The only time where you really can is maybe against like the Deacons of the Deep box fight. But in that instance, you could probably use like the Blood Bite Ring to counteract that blood loss build up. But another thing as to what makes this up and really good is going to be its weapon skill, a neck swipe. For only 13 FP, you get a pretty decent horizontal swipe, good at hitting multiple enemies at once. Actually does get some more range compared to your regular light attack combos. And this thing actually just goes through shields even more than like the regular light attacks do themselves. The regular light attacks bypass the shield and do 40% damage. With the weapon art, it actually does 80% damage through a shield. And it also gets some pretty decent high armor as well. So yes, the Great Corvian Scythe is a very solid weapon overall that has very little downsides. Number 9, we have the Ringed Knight Paired Greatsword, which honestly, all of the Ringed Knight weapons are extremely good. The Straight Sword is probably going to be mainly for PvP, but as for these Greatswords, these are going to be a unique power sensing type of Ultra Greatsword. And its light attack combos are like a longer animation, but you do get a really nice lunge, really high stagger potential, really high damaging. It actually does get a good mix up of variety of vertical swipes, horizontal swipes as well, so it's good for crowd control. And it also does get the highest amount of hype armor in the entire game, like you can tank a whole bunch of attacks while using the light attack combo, which the initial light attack combo is actually going to be a nice thrusting attack, which this can be paired alongside the Leo Ring to just further improve damage. Now, arguably the best thing about this weapon is probably going to be its weapon art, Ember, for 15 FP, do this fire projectile attack and you can actually do a follow up with a light or heavy attack input. The light attack will actually do this nice poking attack that is pretty quick and the heavy attack will do this massive downward slam that does more stagger damage, does more damage in total and some nice AOE effect. Both of them actually do consume an additional 12 FP. So for me, I just like going with a higher damaging one every single time, even though it is a longer animation, it's just like much more satisfying to use. Now these weapons aren't gonna come without any types of downsides. One, the fact that it actually cannot be two handed, you have to do the power sensing combo means that you can't really lower the strength requirement at all. But by the time you actually do get this up and you're probably gonna meet the minimum requirements of 40 anyway. And being that you are holding two whole massive swords, it is going to weigh a decent amount. It does weigh 22.5 units, which is not too heavy compared to some of the other things in the game, but it still is going to be on the heavier side. And I just wish it just had like a little bit better scalings. The damage is okay, but it's not like it's gonna be like the highest damage in the entire game. I wish that the E scalings that it got in Faith and Intelligence were just a lot better. So you can actually further improve that fire damage because that fire damage is kind of just like sitting there, but it still is going to be one of the most fun weapons in the entire game and it still performs extremely well. Number eight, we have the Lothric Knight Greatsword, which this bad boy is probably gonna be the best ultra greatsword in the entire game. It just gets the most amount of damage, which I'm gonna have to talk about to the Fugs as well, the Fume Ultra Greatsword. I didn't really know what happened when this thing actually got a resurgence and popularity, but obviously I was doing some more research and testing out and a lot of people tend to still like this weapon, which I guess it is pretty valid because it does look really cool, but I thought people just like casted it away after its nerf that it received closer towards when the game actually came out because that nerf was a pretty hefty blow to its base damage. And it was to the point that like you can get way more damage with other types of ultra great swords for like much less weight 
and much better requirements. And most of the other Ultra Great Swords get access to thrusting type damage as well, which I just prefer a lot more with those heavy attacks because you can pair them alongside the Leo Ring, which this thing doesn't actually get thrusting damage with this poking attack. It's still not going to be a bad weapon. You can still get some really nice damage. It actually does get the highest amount of hyper armor alongside the Ring's Knight paired Great Swords. It actually kind of just does double down as a shield as well because it actually has some decent physical damage reduction when guarding. But I'm still going to go with the Lothric Knight Great Sword as the best Ultra Great Sword because the damage is just unrivaled. It also doesn't weigh very much for an Ultra Great Sword, only at 16.5 units. Its requirements aren't that high also, and its ability to be infused makes it very versatile. And ironically, it actually gets a better dexterity scaling with a sharp infusion compared to its heavy infusion and strength scaling, which the difference between the heavy and strength build isn't going to be that much of a difference, but it is pretty funny that it actually does get more damage with a sharp infusion. But even going with like a lightning-based infusion is still going to be really good because this weapon also does get base splits lightning damage, which the fact that you can infuse and buff it does make it very unique. So doubling down into that lightning infusion or just going with a sharp infusion with lightning blade to just further improve the lightning damage can just result in such high amounts of AR and really high damage. And I just love to spam the heavy attack on this thing because poking attacks are just always going to be good and pairing it alongside the Leah ring to make those counter hits just do stupidly high damage is always really fun. I know a lot of the game is R1 spam, but as soon as I put this bad boy on, I'm just doing nothing but charged R2 spam. It's just really fun to use. Now this weapon also does get access to the stomp weapon art, which it actually is a pretty decent weapon art. For 10 FP, you do this like stomping attack that actually does get you a bunch of high armor. You can tank a whole bunch of attacks. And then the follow-up is a very nice high damaging attack that can like yeet enemies up into the air, do some very high amounts of stagger damage. So if you're ever in a situation where you're fighting a bunch of like smaller enemies that are stun locking you, this can be a very nice and direct counter to that. So yeah, if you want a weapon that can just do a bunch of damage in one hit, this one is probably going to be it. Number seven, we have the Great Mace. Now this is a great hammer of which this weapon class is absolutely stacked with amazing options. Great Club, Vort's Great Hammer, Smo's Great Hammer, Leto's Great Hammer, all of these are just really solid and you can go any which way, but I only had to pick one because obviously I want variety on this list and I decided to go with the Great Mace because this one just gets the best of everything in my opinion. It doesn't have that high of requirements, it doesn't weigh that much, especially when you compare it to the Smo's Great Hammer or the Leto's Great Hammer. It gets the most range out of all the Great Hammers that I mentioned and it also gets some of the highest damage as well. The Leto's Great Hammer is probably going to be the highest damaging one when you actually take into account its weapon skill, but the Great Mace actually can be infused and buffed so paired alongside the correct build, you actually can output higher damage with the Great Mace compared to all the other Great Hammers in the game. And for doing it at a much lower weight and requirement and having more range is just going to be much more beneficial in my opinion. And the fact that it actually can be buffed, you can go ahead and throw like a Frost type buff on this thing and you can just have a better version than the Vault's Great Hammer. It's probably not going to proc Frost as fast as that, but the bonus range and damage that you get with the Great Mace is what I'm just going to lean more towards anyway. Now the reason why Great Hammers in general are just amazing is because they get very high stagger damage, very good high armor. Their movesets are very wide horizontal swipes when two-handed, meaning that you can actually hit multiple enemies very easily. It means that it's going to have better hit detection too. And for the Great Mace in particular, the weapon art is Perseverance, of which this is just going to result in just more damage negation and just much more high armor for a few seconds. And for only 12 FP, you can't really go wrong. It just makes trading out with enemies just even more easy. So a bunch of the Great Hammers are going to be very viable options, but I think the Great Mace makes for the best one. Number six, we have the Moonlight Greatsword, which honestly, the Moonlight Greatsword just keep getting better and better with every single iteration, performance-wise at least, which in this game, the Moonlight Greatsword is probably going to be the best intelligence weapon in the entire game. Gets really high magic damage, you get a pretty decent intelligence scaling, meaning that you can just go all into intelligence, pair this aside a bunch of really good sorceries, and you got one of the best builds in the entire game. But to just get right into it, the best thing about this weapon is going to be its projectile attacks, the fact that you get a projectile with its charge heavy is just really amazing because it doesn't consume FP, so it's just basically a free projectile attack that does really high amounts of damage. And at point blank range, it just does bonus damage because you're hitting with the weapon itself and the projectile as well. Now, there are going to be a couple of downsides. One, it actually does consume a little bit of durability. It is only four durability, and being that you have 75 durability in total with this weapon, it is going to take a while before you actually end up running out or having to use a repair powder. But repair powders are very plentiful in this game and very easy to acquire. So it's not that big of a deal. But the most annoying thing is that the horizontal projectile attack just doesn't track upwards at all. It just always travels in a flat line. So if you actually want to hit enemies that are like you're higher above you or lower than you, you're going to have to use the one-handed charge heavy attack because it actually does go travel vertically. But the fact that you can just do like more damage and more poise damage with a charged heavy attack with this greatsword compared to all the other greatswords in the game is obviously going to be really good. But it also just doesn't end there. It's Weapon Arts Moonlight Vortex for 18 FP is also very high damaging. Now this one isn't going to be much of a projectile as it is going to be like a close range type of attack, but it is pretty quick. You do get some nice hype drama and this one is just going to be higher damaging and actually do even more stagger damage. Like this thing can stagger a whole bunch of enemies really quickly. And for only 18 FP, 
XP, you can't really go wrong. This weapon is probably not as cool looking as the old Moonlight spell, but it definitely performs a lot better. Number five, we have the Dragon Slayer's Great Axe, which honestly, all the Dragon Slayer weapons are just really good. You can probably put them all here, but I am just going to talk about the Dragon Slayer's Great Axe because this one is probably going to be the best of the bunch. The Great Axe weapon class is extremely good. Those light attack combos are very high damaging. They're actually very quick, nice downward chops that actually do some very high stagger damage too. Now the Dragon Slayer's Great Axe is probably going to be the best in class. Despite it probably not getting as much damage as a regular Great Axe, I'm probably going to prefer this one a lot more because it does get some more range. But the Weapon Arts Falling Bolt is just going to be the best thing about this. For 35 FP, you just do so much damage. You get some nice high armor attack. It is a short range attack that you can't really track very well. But if your timing and spacing is correct, you can just output so much damage with this thing. And it can trivialize a whole bunch of bosses really quickly. And the fact that it's doing lightning damage is really nice because a lot of enemies in this game are very weak to lightning damage. Only very few are resist to it. And that lightning AOE does actually scale off that faith stats, which the funny thing is, this thing doesn't get a faith requirements, but actually gets a descaling and faith, which that descaling isn't even that bad. You can actually put a decent amount of points into faith and get some very nice lightning damage in return. Now, despite its high damage and easy to use moveset, it is not going to be without any faults. One, it is actually going to be the heaviest great axe in the entire game, weighing in at 20 units. And 35 FP for the weapon art is probably not the most forgiving thing, despite it doing a lot of damage still. But for me, the most annoying thing about great axes in general is going to be those rolling attacks. The two-handed rolling attacks are an absolute egregious offense to like all movesets around the world. I don't know why they feel the need to put this moveset and this rolling attack into like every single game that they have, but they just need to delete this thing. No longer use this ever again. I hate it so much. At number four, we have the Hollow Slayer Greatsword to what I consider the best greatsword in the entire game. So the fact that we're actually, you know, incorporating more variety onto this list means that the Claymore is going to stay at home, unfortunately. But yeah, this thing kind of just like directly outclasses it because typically the Claymore is like the only greatsword that gets poking attacks. But this thing's heavy, both one-handed and two-handed does get poking attacks and it also gets the better light attack combo too because it actually does get some nice variety in vertical and horizontal swipes. Now the Claymore is probably still going to have its use because it actually can be infused and buffed compared to this one so it actually does have some more variety and more versatility with other types of builds but in terms of movesets and damage I think this one is just going to be second to none even though the AR actually is going to be less than the Claymore this thing gets the added benefits of just doing 20% more damage against hollow types of enemies which if you don't know what a hollow enemy is, that's basically like everything in the entire game. Like almost every enemy is just going to take 20% more damage when using this weapon. And the fact that you're doing it with like the best moveset in the entire game and great souls in general are just still gonna be really good because they're still quick. They do actually offer some nice stagger damage and they also get some pretty decent high armor as well. And their weapon skill is going to be Stance, which is now better known as Square Off in Elden Ring, which I don't know why Square Off is not in Great Swords in Elden Ring, but that's perfectly fine. We could talk about that later. But Stance is going to be an amazing weapon art because it's really good at countering shields and it just does a large amount of damage and a nice thrusting attack for only consuming 20 FP. So yeah, this weapon is just really good. There's nothing bad I can say about it. It's probably the best quality based weapon in the entire game. At number three, we have the Exile Greatsword to what I consider the best strength weapon in the entire game. Honestly, all curved greatswords are just amazing. You can put any single one of these things at number three. I'm gonna go with the Exile Greatsword because it just does the most amount of damage and it looks really cool. But what makes curved greatswords so amazing is that their movesets are so fast. They have such high stagger damage and they just output a lot of damage in general. That is really good. But the light attack combo is amazing. Nice horizontal swipes. The follow-up light attack comes out so incredibly quick that it just makes R1 spamming just even better. The heavy attack is a very nice lunge. You take a few steps forward, actually can like close in the distance pretty well. Its running attack is probably like one of the best running attacks in the entire game alongside the katanas. It's so incredibly fast and the fact that it is a horizontal swipe as well means it actually can hit multiple enemies at once. And Curve Great Swords also just gets Spin Slash as its weapon skill, which this thing can stun lock smaller enemies extremely quickly. And for only 25 FP, you can just output so much damage. So yeah, these are just such amazing weapons. But yeah, the Exile Greatsword, I'm probably going to value the most due to it as having the best scalings. You get S scalings like all across the board. You get double A scalings and like Chaos and Dark Infusions. It's just really good. It does actually have the least amount of range compared to all the other curved greatswords, but the damage is just undeniable. Number two, we have the Lothric Knight Straight Sword. Now, Straight Swords are just the best weapon class in the entire game, and it is not even close. Every single one is just overpowered. The R1 spamming potential is just through the roof, which is pretty funny because, like, Straight Swords have probably the best variety in moveset. You get horizontal swipes, vertical swipes, and poking attacks. 
but yeah, this one-handed R1 spam is just going to be best. This shit just works really well. Now, the Lothric Knight Straight Sword is just going to be the best in class because it just gets the best scalings. You get S scalings like for everything all the time. You just get S scaling, so it can just result in the highest amount of AR. And this thing also does get 110 crit multiplier. So pairing this alongside parrying type builds or just getting backstabs is just going to result in even more damage. And the 110 crit multiplier pairs very nicely alongside the stance weapon skill, which this thing actually does break shields very nicely with its light attack version. And the heavy attack is just going to be a higher staggering type of option that can poise break enemies somewhat quickly. And you actually do get high armor alongside this attack too. So you're getting high armor with a straight sword is already insane. But the fact that it's going to be a poke as well means you can pair this along to the Leer Ring to just further improve the damage. Which speaking of which, you get poking attacks with both the one-handed and two-handed heavy with a Lothric Knight straight sword. So it's basically as if they made their Claymore a straight sword and just gave it more critical damage. Is basically what we have right here. This thing is just absolutely insane. There is probably like no weapon that is easier to use than the Lothric Knight straight sword. Now, before I get into number one, I just want to give some honorable mentions because, like, there are so many good weapons in this game. But I want to give an honorable mention to all of the power sensing types of movesets. Every single one of these power sensing weapons are just really good. The Dragon Hammer is probably the best one, but the Wings Knight Twin Axes are really good. The Kestis is also really good. The Dragon Spears are nice too. But I also do want to talk about Freighter's Great Scythe. People might be questioning why this is not on the list. I was contemplating putting this one at number 10 over the Corvian Scythe, but like, the Corvian Scythe, it just does more damage and just has faster attacks. I just felt like it was more easier to use because the Freighter's Great Scythe, I did not like that light attack combo. It is very slow, but the weapon art is extremely good. It does stun lock enemies nicely, even though the damage is still not going to be as good as the Corvians. It can actually output some frost damage, but the Corvians can actually be buffed. So you can just pair it alongside a frost type of buff and you can get bleed and frost at the same time. Whereas the Freighters doesn't get bleed also, it's the only scythe that doesn't get it. But for me, the best thing about Freighters Great Scythe is going to be that weapon art R2, that nice AoE frost attack, even though it is pretty slow, it actually can output some nice damage, stagger nicely, and actually hit multiple enemies at once. So it is an amazing weapon, but unfortunately for me, it has had one too many downsides to make it to the top 10. Number one, we have the Cell Sword Twin Blades. If anybody ever tells you that this game is nothing but R1 spam, tell them that they're wrong because the best weapon in the game doesn't require to click the R1 button a single time. All you're doing is clicking the L1 button and if you want to use the weapon skill, you click L2 and R2. So therefore, the R1 button is never pressed. Checkmate liberals. Anyway, but yes, this is the best weapon in the entire game because the DPS is just through the roof. It's so fast, amazing moveset. You get some nice vertical and horizontal types of attacks. Being that you're hitting with two weapons, it can stun lock even better. It can stagger better than most curved swords. The weapon skill is spin slash, which is a nice spin to win. That can also stun lock enemies very nicely. And being that you're hitting so many times in quick succession, you can pair it alongside the pontiff types of rings to result in more health regen or damage. This shit is just insane. Now, it's probably not going to be as easy to use compared to like the loft Knight Straight Sword because you can actually have that thing just one-handed and you can pair that alongside a shield so it's easy of use is probably not going to be as good but like it's not like it's hard to use at all. Once you just ditch the shield and learn how to dodge this is just going to be better to have because the damage is just it's just OP. It's just OP damage. And also to mention you get it right at the beginning. Literally a starting class weapon. You can get it off a starting class. What? But that basically concludes the list. As always, please let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe. The next video will most likely be either top 10 Bloodborne or Elden Ring ones. I don't know which one I'm actually going to end up doing, but it'll definitely be one of those. And do follow me on Twitch as well, because I do a bunch of challenge runs there, testing out all these different types of weapons and spells to make lists like this. Anyway, catch you guys around. Bye.